Hey everybody, welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name's Insert Name here, and today we'll be adding custom collision meshes to a singular mesh. Um, the reason why you would like to add custom collision meshes is because UE isn't really good at working out collision meshes. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now what do I mean with UEL's weird collision mesh generation? Well, see, um, here we have a simple desk, right? Um, here we have uh, the first person character controller. In the background we have just a basic HDRI. I made a tutorial how to set up that HDRI. I'll link it down below. But anyway, if we hit play, you should see when I shoot the desk, uh, the projectiles don't go under the desk, even though there's clearly a defined hole here. Well, <laughs> this is because UE automatically generates collision if you don't provide custom collision. Now, how does this collision look? Well, um, the green part is the collision it's using for physics calculations, and uh, as you can clearly see, it's not really accurate. I thought it's a cube. It thinks the desk is just one big old cube. And this blue here is actually the complex collision, which is one we rarely use because it's really intensive to use this for anything. Um, you can technically use this uh, collision for, as the simple one, but this is highly not recommended because it's way too performance heavy. So how are we going to fix this simple mesh? Uh, well, uh... We're going to have to use a 3D program, or 3D modeling program, sorry, just like uh, Blender or Maya. Uh, um, I'm so used to Blender, so I'll be using Blender for this tutorial. So if I go to Blender, here we have the desk. Let me just delete these. Okay, yeah. And if we look now, yeah, we have the desk uh, just here. And the thing is, we want to add custom collision to this. Now, I might go a bit too fast for some viewers, and I really, I really apologize for that. It's not my intention. Um, so, in the top right bottom, I have a shortcut key, so it will display everything I do uh, on screen. So, uh, if you ever get lost, just look at my shortcut keys I'm using. So first we're gonna have to press shift A and go create a new mesh. We'll just make this a cube. Um, and we're gonna go to the modeling tab. Uh, important thing we want to do is we want to turn on X-ray and go to our just viewport shaded mode. And, and we want to hover on one of these vertices, press L. Then we want to scale this down with the S key. Um, we're just gonna scale this down to be the top part of the desk. Um, doesn't have to be too accurate, like I said. It's dependent on what you're going to use this for. If this is going to be used as a common calculation or a common thing the player is going to run into or notice, then feel free to add a lot of more effort to this. But this is a desk. I don't think a player would care if a desk's collision was just a bit off. Just scale it down like it fits. Yeah, yeah that fits pretty well. Uh, just actually just scale it on top. Yeah, something like that's fine. Um, then the next one we're going to do is we want to add collision for G's uh, legs. Now, the problem is we can't add this all to a singular object because UE uh, pretty much hates that. So we're just going to press Shift A. Uh, oh, I'll press Shift D. Uh, just press Shift A. Uh, make a new cube. Go to the modeling tab. The reason why we're going into the modeling tab before we scale in objects is because you could actually screw up the global scaling of the object you're working with if you scale it in the object tab. So this is just to be uh, careful. So just scale this. Uh, I went into orthographic view. You can do that by going on your numpad and then just uh, we'll just scale this up. Awesome. Now it's going to be on the wrong place so we'll just press 3 on our keyboard to move our off graphic scaling then we'll just press G to move it we're gonna rotate this just move it with G again 
uh, somewhere like yeah, yeah, and that's pretty cool. Uh, um, now you might be wondering why we're we using cubes instead of cylinders. Well, cylinders would be more accurate for our calculations. Like I said, this is just a basic test. It's very unnecessary for us. Um, so that's why we're just using basic cubes. So we're just gonna uh, shift duplicate this. Um, and then press X while we're holding this. So we can move it a bit. Um, I'm also gonna press shift D again. Um, and then just lock it on the Y by pressing Y. Then we're gonna go to the modeling tab. Uh, go to our right orthographic, which is free on the keyboard. And then just move it until it fits yeah that's perfect and we're just gonna press one on our keyboard and then nine so we go to the back of our orthographic view and then we can just press uh and this is one thing that might catch you out like it did to me you should not duplicate objects in the modeling tab because it makes everything a singular object and that's not good so every time you want to duplicate something Go to your layouts tab, go press 1 and then press 9 to go to the back orthographic. And then now we can press shift D because now it's totally fine to do that. It's a different object and yeah. Now if we look at our mesh here, this is pretty much it. We are not going to work out too much complex collision with this. So it's just going to be a basic object for now. I think uh, let's just move this cube up a bit. It kind of hurts my soul um, in a way. So I'll just press, uh, just make sure you select it on it. Just move it with G, move it up a bit. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, um, now, <laughs> a funny story, right, is um, I have the documentation open here for our UE. And, well, you, there's actually a section here, right, uh, here, where you can import custom collision. And it says, just name your mesh, UCX, render mesh, name, number. Now, you might think that means you should go make another mesh, and you shouldn't do everything in one mesh. Well, uh, no, that's, that's quite not how it works. Um, so how this works is, we're just going to take our school desk, right-click it. Go to ID data, rename, and we're just going to remove the number from this. Makes our life easier. And also while we're here, we can, might just, just well, like, copy the name. Go to our first cube, and we're going to go to ID data, and rename it. Now at the end, we're going to put around the uh, number, like, uh, sorting this, and we're also going to add, at the back, we're going to add a CUX. Oh, no, UCX, because it's convex. Um, it has to be in capitals, the first three letters. The rest should just match the same case as this, except for the added number. So we might as well just also go to this ID data, uh, copy this name, and we're just going to paste that and change the number. So we'll just rename everything here, paste it, and just uh, name it, uh, just number it. It uh, doesn't really matter how you number it, as long as they all have the same basic layout, UCX in capitals, and they're numbered correctly. Um, like I said, order doesn't matter of what they are, they should just be in order. So yeah, let's just name it 4, and then we're going to make the last cube ID data. Uh, rename, and then we're just going to make that 5. And awesome. Now you might be wondering, well, hey, this kind of blocks the mesh. What are you doing, insert? Well, um, see, uh, this might block the mesh in our 3D software, but you is gonna ignore this, um, this static mesh and just use it as a collision because we told it to by adding this prefix and suffix. So now that you're done here, you can just file, export, FPX. And I'm just going to export this to the my desktop, why not? Actually, no, I'm just going to export it to a uh, document. If uh, Blender will allow me to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Blender sometimes, man. Anyway, let's just name it school desktop FPX. Uh, all these export settings are fine. So when we go into UE now, and I go here, and I'll just go 
to the file and just look, yes, school desk. You can just drag it in uh, if you're on Windows. If you're on any other operating system like Linux, for example, you can just go to import and import the file. Um, this generate missing collision checkbox doesn't matter because it will use custom collision even if you tell it to use missing, like create new collision. So just imports all. No smoothing group, perfectly normal. Now we're just going to drag our school desk in. It's a pretty small scale. I actually scaled this one up because it was too small as well. So let me just scale it to 1.5. 1.5. And 1.5. Now if I go and hit play. Yeah, this one doesn't allow me to shoot a projectile through. But this one, well it does. Um, it in fact works perfectly well. It has totally correct collision, or at least the amount of correct collision we need from it. And if we go and open our object and look by going into our show, and we're going to show the simple and complex, you'll see, yeah, this is the simple collision, which is very simplified and it's pretty accurate for what it is. And even if the complex collision is still way more accurate, it's way more performance heavy than this and you're gonna have to make custom collisions for practically all your objects that you're gonna expect collisions to happen upon um now you could make this a bit better uh but there's one rule of thumb about making the custom collision meshes is we make them separate objects because you can't actually have holes in your objects um you can technically make them concave but that's a bad idea i'll just use simple square cylinder stuff like that and make them separate objects like we did here legs are separate objects and the top part is a different object you can have a different part for this top layer here uh, that's totally up to you this is just for now the basic one i really enjoyed and yeah this is already way more performant and uh, it's pretty accurate, as we can see. If I was, if it was possible for me to crouch with this, I could probably crouch under this. Thanks everybody for watching the video. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit like if you liked the video. Hit dislike if you didn't. Um, sorry about all the delays I've had with this video. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on currently. Um, for any person that's wondering about the car AI tutorial series series sorry there should be an episode next friday about this week and next monday i'll just post um fun stuff or more of the untalked about stuff in ue currently but without further ado uh good night everybody